Nestled between mountain ranges of all shapes and sizes, Great Basin National Park is a place where the land, animals, and people collide to form one of America's most diverse national parks. Located off of the loneliest road, US-50 in the Nevada desert, Great Basin receives far few visitors than the Red Rock Utah parks to the east or Yosemite Valley to the west, but because of this isolation, the visitors that do travel to this secluded park will find their journey well worth the time and effort. Let's take a look into how this Nevada National Park came to be so great. The materials needed to form the Great Basin, which stretches from southern Oregon all the way down into Mexico, began as sediments like sand and mud settled on the bottom of a shallow sea around 560 million years ago. Over time, the sediments hardened and turned into sedimentary rock, which formed structures like the popular Lehman Caves. 200 million years ago marked the beginning of the Sevier Orogeny, a massive geologic event that began to metamorphose the rocks and the crust in the Great Basin area, which began to lead to the creation of the mountains and valleys seen in the park today. More recently, during the many ice ages between 200,000 and 20,000 years ago, huge lakes including Lake Bonville, which rivaled the size of Lake Michigan, dominated the horizon all across the Great Basin. Retreating glaciers, however, only left behind moraines, rocky ridges found in almost all areas of glacier activity, and small remnant lakes such as Brown and Baker Lake and the Great Salt Lake a few hundred miles to the northeast. Many native peoples would come and go in the Great Basin area, but the people named after the Fremont River would be the ones to remain in the basin for over 200 years. The Fremont people spread out across eastern Nevada and central Utah inhabited Baker Village, located a few miles from the National Park, and left their mark by painting rock art in Upper Pictograph Cave. The Fremont people lived in the area until sometime between 1300 and 1500 CE, when they mysteriously disappeared. Quiet fell upon the basin for many centuries, and it wouldn't be until the mid-19th century after Absalom Lehman had traversed both California and the Outback in search of gold earlier in the century before settling for ranching in the Snake Valley. Moving from Weaver Creek to Lehman Creek around 1869, Lehman and several other frontiersmen started to populate the area with all sorts of goods. However, Lehman's biggest finding would come shortly after the tragic 1883 passing of his wife, Olive. Lehman discovered a beautiful cave hidden in the mountains near his homestead, and eventually started giving tours to visitors starting in 1885, until his death in 1891. Also around this time, other ranchers were herding sheep in the basin area, leaving their marks on sturdy aspen trees, some of which can still be seen in the park today. Ranching continued throughout the park until the 1990s when the National Park Service gave the ranchers money to end their ranching permits, which put an end to ranching on the divided landscape. Unsurprisingly, it wasn't long after Lehman's death that the government took interest in the wonders that Lehman Cave had to offer, and on January 24, 1922, Lehman Cave's National Monument was established under the protection of an unlikely group, the U.S. Forest Service. While the National Parks were under the MPS's service, the National Monuments of the U.S. were under the Forest Service's protection until 1933, when all National Monuments, including Lehman Caves, were incorporated into the NPS. The caves remained a National Monument until 1986, when the caves, as well as the surrounding area, was made into Great Basin National Park, with the Visitor Center at Great Basin being completed in 2005. The Great Basin Visitor Center is located outside of the park near the intersection of Nevada State Routes 487 and 48, while the Lehman Caves Visitor Center sits just inside the park near the entrance to, well, Lehman Caves. The park offers both a lodge room tour and a longer Grand Palace tour through the cave system, with the longer of the two passing by the parachute shield formation, one of many shields consisting of two plates with a crack in the middle separating them. These tours are an additional charge, however, costing $9 and $11 respectively for adults. Past the caves, the Wheeler Peak Scenic Drive takes visitors throughout the park, offering views of much of what Great Basin has to offer. The park's website describes the journey as a trip through numerous ecological zones, the equivalent of driving from Baker, Nevada, to the frozen Yukon. From fields of sagebrush to Ashman families, the trip across this rugged terrain is sure to exceed any expectations. The Bristlecone Trail, which departs from a point further down the road, leads visitors to one of the most amazing sites of any of America's national parks, the oldest living organisms in the world. These were seen in the form of the bristlecone pine trees. The oldest specimen ever recorded in the park was at least 4,862 years old, and was removed for research in 1964. The glacier trail continues past the end of the bristlecone trail, and ends at Nevada's only glacier. One of the most physically intensive tasks in the park is the Wheeler Peak Summit Trail. This path leads visitors to the top of Wheeler Peak, the tallest mountain in the Snake Range. The trail rises almost 3,000 feet in elevation over 8.6 miles, and it is recommended to start the trek in the morning to avoid potential afternoon storms. As mentioned earlier, Pictograph Cave presents a look into 3,000-year-old cave art created by the Fremont Indians. The caves hold drawings of both living things as well as abstract art, and many Native American artifacts have also been found there. Finally, the park offers astronomy programs, which are especially breathtaking due to Great Basin being home to one of the darkest skies in the country. 
From the insights it offers into both human and natural history, it is clear that the Great Basin needs to be preserved and that we are lucky to have the opportunity to visit it to this day. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more in the future, make sure to subscribe.